When Activision went looking to select a team as dynamic and intense as the action-driven game they'd be designing, their search ended at Seven Studios, the developer destined to bring the cosmic ray altered astronauts of the Fantastic Four to the PlayStation 2. I'm a massive fan of Fantastic Four. I'm actually a fan of the Fantastic Four. We're a group of uh, guys who make games. We love superheroes. We literally dance around the office. We were so excited. Figuring out what is going to be the most interesting, the best, the most exciting Fantastic Four game possible. The next minute, um, I was on a flight to New York to shoot city pictures. Feels like, as a company, this is a game that we were created to make. As the film rockets into theaters this summer, enthusiastic fans will have the opportunity to go beyond the big screen and bring the quad of Marvel's most popular heroes into their homes. I think one of the really interesting things about this group of superheroes compared to others is that they don't have secret identities. They actually are who they are. Everybody knows who they are, and you sort of go through the transformation process with them. The cosmic rays have altered our DNA somehow. This better be a hell of a bad dream. DNA not recognized. We follow the evolution of the Fantastic Four in how they get their powers, then on to how they use their powers against evil. Ever dream of turning invisible, flying through the air, stretching your limbs into infinity, or smashing your enemies with a single devastating blow? Unlike most superhero games which focus on just one character, Fantastic Four puts the multifaceted abilities of all the main characters into your hands. A lot of people actually really don't know who the Fantastic Four are. I wear my shirt around all the time because I'm really proud of the project and the property. I run into people and they say, yeah, there's the stretchy guy, yeah, and the fire guy, but really there's Ben Grimm, who's the big rock, the orange guy. He's the really the tank of the group. Reed Richards, who a lot of people uh, confuse me with, uh, he is the, uh, the leader of the group. He's the brains behind the organization. Sue Storm, who is actually Reed's girlfriend, she is the Invisible Girl, originally, I think they probably changed it to The Invisible Woman to be a little bit more correct. A woman's work is never done. And then there's Johnny Storm, who also is known as Johnny Blame. It, obviously, he's the one of the most famous ones. They're not just a group of characters, but they're all interrelated. You know, we have Johnny and Sue, who are brother and sister. Nice work back there. Why do you sound so surprised? Easy, sis, just giving you props. Reed and Sue, who are have a relationship. Ben, who's sort of the outcast, but also has a kind of a crush on Sue. Ben, it's Sue. Open the door. No, you can't see me like this. So they have this sort of dysfunctional family group as well as their superpowers that are also really interesting. Every hero needs a villain to wreak some havoc. And while the game will be populated with a multitude of familiar faces, perhaps none are as iconic and frightening as the metallic visage of Dr. Victor Von Doom himself. Reed, I want some answers. I expect to see you this evening at the museum. The Fantastic Four has always emphasized teamwork, and here, the more you coordinate your attacks and work together, the more reward you get. We actually shaped the levels to fit the character perfectly, so we have sections where you're Johnny only, and at certain times we would bring them together so that they can fight together as two or three or even four and have them defeat even bigger and bigger enemies. One of my favorite things to do is, is buff up the other character. So as Johnny, you can actually uh, put a ring of fire around Sue. You can actually call for a buddy buff. Say you're Ben, you're in trouble. Uh, you can call Sue and she can put a shield around you. Another aspect of teamwork that is really fun is, is the ability to uh, use team combos. Uh, when you or AI character grapples a character, you actually can run up to him and you pull off a really cool move. Uh, we also reward the player by doing teamwork by giving them extra bonuses. Just like their early comic book counterparts, the game characters need time to master their powers. This evolving character growth allowed the producers to faithfully recreate the Fantastic Four universe while rewarding players with a wide variety of power-ups. You purchase upgrades, you, you purchase new moves, like to simulate the fact that they are getting used to their powers in the beginning of our game, and then by the end of the game they are very used to the powers and just unleashing some devastating attacks on the enemy. So you're never bored because you're always switching between characters, but you never get bored with any character because you're always saving up for that next cool upgrade, and it keeps it really exciting all the way up to the end. A lot of the enjoyment in team games comes from playing with a friend, and Fantastic Four is no different. Utilizing a unique co-op mode designed specifically for team play, the game offers two players the ability to fight side by side, an experience different than the single player game. In our testing and in the focus testing, that's really been something that people have keyed on and have loved. It's so much fun to be John, Johnny and Ben together with your friend, and you can yell at each other and get mad and you know, steal the points. This is the part where you bump your buddy and tell him why did you know why they steal that kill or you know. 
know, why did they pick up the power up when they were at full health? And it's just when you see people play it, it really captures the essence of sort of the dysfunction as well as the cooperative battle that the, the Fantastic Four go through. A little help over here. Let me at him. Yeah. The teamwork on the screen is rooted directly in the teamwork behind the scenes, as Seven Studios pulled its group together to give the Fantastic Four the video game treatment it so richly deserves. We have a great bunch of animators here and, uh, and effects artists as well on the staff. They have gone to great lengths to recreate uh, the four very different characters that are the Fantastic Four. We've got a guy that is on fire all the time, which means that we're running about, you know, 30, maybe 40 particle systems on Johnny alone, just all the time. Well, the first thing we wanted to do when we tried to create a realistic Johnny Flame was take one of our artists and light him on fire and have him run around. That didn't really work out too well. <laughs> just kidding. We actually talked to the movie people who were doing the, the effects for Johnny and learned some things from them. Actually, they looked at what we were doing and, and saw things that they liked as well. Fire wants to expand. Fire wants to grow outside of its boundaries. Fire does not want to stay on a limb in the way that they do uh, in a superhero kind of a world. All I can say is that it was both a team effort of artists and programmers working together, which is really critical when you get that teamwork. That's when you get the real beautiful results. With over 40 years of source material to pull from, the developers have worked overtime in delivering an immersive experience for the fans of the comics and the film. Fantastic Four The Game is the closest they can get without actually starring in the blockbuster movie themselves. Well, you know, there are a lot of hardcore fans of Fantastic Four out there, and this game will definitely appeal to them. One of my goals in Fantastic Four The Game was to make it into a collector's item. Not only a game that lasts with the extra features, all the work, all the, the little touches, it's something that if somebody really loves Fantastic Four, they're going to want to have on their shelf because they're going to refer back to it and, and have that sort of a piece of history. Comic book history is, is one of the things we're trying to accomplish with this. Everyone needs our protection on Yancey Street. But who's going to protect you, punk? is um, a continuation of the Twisted Metal story. The Twisted Metal story is the character Calypso holds a contest, an annual contest called Twisted Metal. Twisted Metal Head On is more of a spiritual sequel to Twisted Metal 2 than, say, Black was. It brings back a lot of everyone's favorite characters from Twisted Metal 2, um, a lot of the same dynamics, a lot of the same play. Twisted Metal Head On is about car combat. It's about a vehicle, full of weapons, full of uh, machine guns, 
missiles, all that good stuff. It's designed to be fast-paced, uh, lots of action. You're, you are always, uh, you're always on the move. If you sit still, you'll be taken out pretty quick. The replayability of Twist Metal Head-On is great. Um, there's, def there's different story modes. If you perhaps were to go through um, a mode of a single player, you could pick a vehicle and play the entire game through with that one vehicle. Or you can go into a challenge mode and you can pick a different vehicle and you can also pick your opponents. So each time you play it, it's, it's a different game, even within the same level. You'll find there's some familiar environments in uh, Twist Metal Head-On. Uh, we went back to some of the old favorites that were in, in TM2. We had our Paris uh, freeway and so forth. We, we tried to adapt uh, a similar color scheme, kind of a similar brightness. It was intended to be uh, kind of a nostalgic feel to that, to give it a, a familiar flavor of what Twisted Metal always has been. I think when people get their hands on Twisted Metal Head On, what they're going to be most impressed with is how great it looks. The PSP screen is phenomenal. It started from the same engine as we used in black. Um, we have a lot of the same detail that we had in black. I think, I think the thing that everybody here at the studio, when we first saw this game play on a PSP, that we were just blown away with is this small thing in your hand is playing Twisted Metal. I mean, you're blowing things up. You are uh, driving a vehicle, firing your weapons, having a good time, all in a box that fits in your pocket. And the, and the graphics are sharp. Uh, they're, they're pretty. They're colorful. Uh, the sound is great for this. I think that the, that's what's going to blow people away about this game. You know, you take a character from the beginning where you're kind of wondering, what's his story? You know, why does, uh, why does Axel have these tires attached to his body? And as you play through the game, you, you learn about what happened to the character. Um, each character has a different reason for being in this contest and a different wish. In Twist Metal Head-On, you're going to find all of the vehicles and the weapons that you have expected. A lot of the favorite vehicles that everybody has been dying for us to bring back are back. You get a chance to do some muscle cars. You get to be, uh, you get to do F1 cars. Big uh, machinery type vehicles down to your smaller, quicker, zippy vehicles. Old Charger, you know, kind of an old souped up vehicle from the old days. Each vehicle in Twist Metal Head On um, definitely has its own personality. Um, there's a character behind each vehicle. Um, in the game, you also get a little background story on each character, um, their reason for being here. Um, how it kind of ties into their choice of vehicle. And each vehicle has a different way of fighting. You remember back in TM2, there was teleporters to let you get around the world. Um, it's, a, it's a fun way to, it's, it's a way to escape uh, quickly. Like if you're being trapped, you can, you can just go onto the teleporter, it takes you off to somewhere in the environment. Most environments have two or three teleporters. We've gone with the same features as far as power-ups. Um, you run over uh, a homing missile power-up to get more homing missiles uh, and whatnot. We have a new upgrade feature where you can actually customize your vehicle by which upgrades you obtain. It is high speed and it is a lot of fun. What they'll do is, is they can affect how powerful your weapon is, how high you jump, and it'll actually, some of them give you more armor. That's always been, in my mind, the most successful element of our games in, in the car genre. It's been that, that perfect mix. People enjoy it. You know, I mean, people might say, well, you're not supposed to jump up in the air and spin around, but you know, I mean, we're playing a game here. It's, it's, you've got to make it fun. One Charles 37, 998. Multiple suspects down. Request ambulance, code 3. I don't want to kill you. I just want to talk. That gun don't make you a man. I know I made a deal with the devil. Yo, it ain't that easy to walk away from this game. How you expect this to eat? I gotta get this paper by any means necessary. I keep it real with it. To the deal with it. You gotta deal with it. Cause you
still get it. And every morning when I get up, my boots don't change. I'm getting money, I need six more things. I keep it real with it, to the hill with it. You gotta deal with it, cause you can still get it. And every morning when I get up, I know don't change. I'm getting money, I need six more things. Come on. A battle raged at the end of the first tournament. Good versus evil, locked in mortal combat. The forces of Earthrealm were facing the greatest challenge. And they prevailed. The sorcerer, Shang Tsung, chose to run instead of accepting his defeat. Through a portal to Outworld, the horde of rogues escaped. The Thunder God assured the safety of his warriors. But the champion of Earthrealm and his most trusted ally were destined to take another path. Fighting together or independently, Liu Kang and Kung Lao struggled to face the threats of Outworld. Always resourceful, they never miss a chance to use their surroundings to dispatch an enemy. As their journey takes them deeper into the realm, they meet old friends and formidable adversaries. With experience as their teacher, the Shaolin monks become greater warriors. First, for the mastery of powerful weapons. Later, Gaining mortality to deal with groups of enemies. And finally, unleashing the raw force of brutality. Mortal Kombat Shaolin Monks. Coming Fall 2005. This title not yet rated.